Gigabyte's Aorus X299 Gaming 7 motherboard is packed with useful features, and right now if you buy one you can also get the Aorus X299 Experience Pack with bonus items including a hoodie, LED strip, and 12 month XSplit subscription. Click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! Hey everybody, how's it going and welcome to Paul's Hardware. I wanted to keep today's video fairly simple, uh, mainly to make sure I could get it done without anything going wrong. So to that end, I've decided to move forward with my Arctic Panther next step uh, because I finally have a bunch of parts that have arrived from EK, EK Water Blocks, EKWB. So I'm gonna post links to the stuff, or at least uh, a lot of the stuff that's arrived here in this video's description. And the build I'm gonna be doing is gonna be an Intel build with an X299 chipset motherboard, the ROG Strix from ASUS right here. I have two-way GTX 1080 Ti's that are gonna go in there too. Water cooling stuff, uh, it's gonna be super exciting, yeah. I also have two 7820Ks uh, that I need to uh, test out and, um, and see which one of them is faster. Um, Cause when you get, I want to make sure whichever one can overclock better actually goes in. So anyway, all that said, let's dive right into it and start cracking this box open. I have done zero prep. Uh, like this is my first time opening this box. So I hope, I hope everything uh, did okay in shipping. And I also neglected to cut all the tape. All right. First in the box, we have uh, air. We got a fair amount of air in here. We'll just toss that to the side. And then, oh goodness, there's like a lot of things in here. Um, I, When you're getting stuff from EK, since it's got to ship overseas, um, you got to make sure that I account for everything. So I went a little overkill uh, with my plans equipment, um, but uh, hopefully Hopefully that means that I won't have to order anything that uh, didn't, that I forgot to place and uh, to order with the original order, if that makes sense. Um, but all right. So item number one is going to be uh, the fans, and uh, these are the EK Vardar Evo, the uh, next generation of EK Vardar's fans. And uh, I should be using my knife to open these boxes, but I'm not. Uh, these fans are pretty straightforward, they're all black. Uh, and they stay fairly quiet, so, um, you know, they, they've done a good job. These are the fans that I had used in, uh, or at least the prior version of these is what I used in Hotbox, my wife's system, uh, and they stay pretty quiet. These have a 500 to 2200 RPM range, uh, but I'm going to try to hopefully keep them at the lower end of that range, and I have uh, eight, yeah, I got eight of them total, um, because there's going to be uh, three in the top, two in the front, one in the, wait. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Why do I have eight? I'm trying to do math. I have eight of them because I have two intakes at the front rad, one intake in the bottom. That's three. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe they just sent me an extra one. Or maybe I'm crazy. Or what? I think I'm just crazy. I ordered too many. That's all right. You've got to have a spare in case one doesn't work for some reason. All right, uh, here's an extra cap. Let's get all the fittings out. Okay, now I think I can actually continue. Um, so this is all the individually boxed stuff. I'm gonna go over the, this stuff that's not individually boxed first. First off, the, the reservoir tube, I wanted to be taller. I want a nice tall reservoir on there, so I got the extended version of that. This is a 250 millimeter, uh, I'm sorry, 204 millimeter vertical variant of that. So there's that nice clear tube, and this is just an add-on piece you can get, um, which fits in pretty much all of the uh, EK pump reservoir combos, or they also have individual reservoir items you can get. And I'm combining that with this piece, um, which is just a replacement cap that has three inlets on the top, because I'm sorry, three inlets on the top as well as two on the sides here. Um, and that's gonna get, just give me some more flexibility for how I actually arrange stuff when this is installed in the case since I have to sort of figure out, you know, the direction that the loop goes in and everything. And I wanted to maintain flexibility. That was the main issue is that like, if I need to change something or reroute something or decide that, you know, this tube should go that way or whatever, uh, I want to be able to do that. Uh, I also got some brackets here. So these are the uh, reservoir holder brackets, the X-Res X3 holder. Um, and those can be mounted at various places to hold 
the bracket up, or I'm sorry, to hold the reservoir up. And then this is an actual pump bracket that can mount onto a 120 millimeter fan mount, uh, which is the same uh, basic solution that I had used in the original Arctic Panther build. However, uh, that one is a little bit more official and doesn't involve me just screwing uh, some screws onto places where they're not typically supposed to be screwed onto. Uh, this is the internal tube for the reservoir, so that when the water comes in the top, uh, it doesn't splash. That's, that's what that's for. PETG tubing, of course, uh, I got a bunch of this stuff. It all comes individually wrapped from EK to make sure that uh, the PETG tubing itself doesn't get uh, any, any scuffs or, or anything like that on it because uh, let's face it, if you're water cooling to this level, you're probably at least somewhat concerned about aesthetics and uh, making sure that your tubing is nice and pristine is a good way to go about doing that. I hopefully got plenty. I do have some spare in the garage as well from the hot box build, so there should be plenty of that. Um, Cause I, I, wanna, I wanna try to do a little bit more advanced bending if I can this time. I wanna try to figure out some ways of routing stuff to be unique. Now, I have fittings beyond that. So these are the uh, hardline fittings that they have. These are made for the uh, 16 millimeter external diameter tubes, which is, is what these are. Tubes go on the end there and then the fittings uh, just unscrew like that, and then pop back on the top. Of course, with the O-ring in place to make sure that everything stays watertight. Also gonna attempt to keep these in their individual wrappers because um, they, you know, I, want the, I don't want those to get scuffed either. Now I have a ton of fittings, and here's where I totally went overkill. Even EK was like, dude, you got a lot of fittings you've, you've ordered here, but this is gonna be, this is probably gonna go towards a couple projects, because like I said, I'm gonna be doing a Threadripper water cool build as well, not just the Intel based uh, water cool build that I'm working on right now, but I have caps, fittings of various sizes, uh, rotary fittings so that you can uh, attach them and then angle them a little bit to give yourself a little bit more leeway as you're doing the tubing. Those are super, super helpful, especially with hardline stuff because sometimes with hardline you can get it bent where it's almost perfect, but you need just that little bit of wiggle room and that's what a lot of these can help set you up with. I did also get a few specialty pieces like this one, which is a fill ports, um, because that is the other thing I wanna do besides potentially doing some fancy bends this time, is make sure that it's a little bit easier to drain and refill the loop after it's been built. Because if you saw my Arctic Panther, uh, af like opening it up after a year and a half to two years of use with uh, the minimal amount of, of uh, maintenance that I should have done with it, uh, making the maintenance a little bit easier, I think is gonna be a good way to go about things this time around. So, got some fill port caps and just a bunch of other fittings here, splitters, uh, and this will all hopefully allow me to arrange those uh, parts the way I need to so I can have my fill port, my drain port, and all that good stuff. All right, I actually have two blocks that arrived in this shipping, two water blocks, uh, I should say, um, because they sent me both. They sent me the EK Supremacy Evo AMD edition, uh, which is just the AMD outfitted AM4 mount for water cooling an AMD system. And uh, this is just going to allow me to do some water cooling playing around with, with AMD, which is cool, because I, I have that capability for Intel, but um, this is going to expand my capabilities in that area. I'm not gonna be using this for this particular build right now, but uh, got the potential for some Ryzen water cooling in the future, so that's cool. What I'm actually using for this build is this monoblock here, um, which I'm kind of excited about because I've never actually built a system with a monoblock before, so this will be a slightly new experience. The monoblock is basically a CPU block that expands, and there's various types of monoblocks. Some monoblocks are made like this one, where it's gonna basically be covering the CPU on the bottom. That contact plate is gonna make contact with the CPU and keep it cool. And then there's also an additional piece over here that uh, will make contact with the VRM, so the power delivery, which with X299, keeping those cool can be very uh, important. DeBauer and several others have done tests that show that it can be pretty challenging to keep the VRM uh, equipment cool on an X299 motherboard, of course, depending on which one you use. Now, this is also the Strix version, which means it comes with an LED lead on it, and LEDs in, that are built in there too, since the Strix has the RGB LED capability uh, this plugs in and the block lights up too, so I'm uh, pretty stoked to get that up and running as well. Also interesting with the monoblock is that you don't have like kind of the standard input right there that you do with a, with your typical block. Um, so it's, it's got there a little to the side there so that it can actually make the full circuit there and keep everything cool. So that's gonna be fun. And uh, this, is a, this is a brand new part. EK just launched the uh, monoblock for the Strix X299 and I believe they're working on variants of those for Threadripper boards as well. 
All right, uh, let's, let's take a quick look at our pump res. Here we have our pump and our reservoir. They come together in this uh, same unit. This is the EK X-Res SPC DDC version. Uh, it is a PWM controllable pump. And if you might notice, it comes with the shorty version of the reservoir, and that's why I got the extension, uh, which will pop on there to make it much taller. Taller, yes, there's, there's your side-by-side -side comparison there. More or less. Uh, this one is much longer. Longer theoretically being better in this case. Uh, beyond that, this is roughly the same, uh, not, not exactly the same pump that I used in the original Arctic Panther build, but uh, it's, it's close enough. Uh, these are nice quiet pumps, very solid, very reliable, uh, a lot more reliable than some of the AIO pumps I've been using recently, so uh, I'm pretty confident that one's gonna do a good job too. All right, I am almost done unwrapping all of these things, I think, I'm getting close. Uh, these are the reservoirs. And I've got a 360 and a 240. 240 goes in front. The 360 goes on the top. And I could be wrong, but this might be, this one might be too thick. This is the Coolstream PE, and this is the Coolstream SE, which is the slim. This one might be the thicker, like 38 millimeter uh, thick version of that radiator, um, but we'll double check it and you know, worst case scenario, we'll, we'll, we'll swap that out and get a new one. All right, here's the ra radiator, Coolstream SE. This is the exact same one that I used for the original Arctic Panther, so uh, there's not too much different here. Copper radiator, uh, kind of a medium fin, fin density there, so nice balance between uh, cooling as well as allowing uh, for airflow. Uh, and then of course, it's just got the capped ends and we'll integrate that into the loop ASAP. Let's open this larger one and see if uh, it actually is much thicker. If it is much thicker, I mean, I could, sh I could see if it'll fit. I don't know, a little extra radiator uh, thermal mass isn't gonna kill me, uh, but it's really, it's really down to the, the width of this because I need to make sure I have enough vertical space in the case to actually make use of the radiator, make sure it'll fit in there. Uh, all right, this is definitely the thicker version, yeah. This is the Coolstream PE. So here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the two of those, and you can see, much thicker radiator here. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll probably do a test fit in this, because uh, this is definitely gonna be a two-stage build, and I'll see if it fits. If it fits, I'll go ahead and use it. If not, uh, we'll swap that out and we'll get the thinner version, the special edition instead of the PE. What is P? Slim, not slim. P would be thick. No? I don't, I don't know, I don't know what to be. Maybe just stand, I'm trying to think of synonyms for standard that start with P. Paul, I don't know. So the last thing uh, I have to show you guys here, well, they, this is the graphics card, one of the two graphics cards I'll be using, the 1080 Ti. Now, the backplate on this actually has an RGB LED logo that lights up. So I was originally thinking like, oh, can I reuse this Strix backplate that Asus has included? Because it's not bad at all. Unfortunately, you do need to use the EK uh, provided backplates if you're swapping it in with the, uh, the GPU blocks that I'm using. So I'll have to figure out some other, something else to do with that RGB LED lead. I will be replacing it with this. So a pretty, pretty straightforward backplate there in black. It's got a nice shiny finish on it, but it does look pretty clean, so, you know, can't complain there. All right, so here is how that will sit on there. Ta-da. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but um, like all of, the, all of the screw points, they don't match exactly. They mostly match. I don't know. I think, I think it's mostly this one over here that's not, met, that's not lining up, but anyway. We'll, we'll check that out more thoroughly when we get to the installation part. Coming soon, I hope. Finally, last bit of kit here to show you guys is the actual GPU blocks. Uh, these are, I'm super excited about because uh, they're made specifically for the ASUS Strix 1080 Ti. And uh, the 1080 Ti is also going to remain the highest end card, at least for the rest of this year. So that's kind of cool. When I built original Arctic Panther, I used 980s and it was supplanted by the 980 Ti pretty quickly. These also have this new piece on the end that's kind of optional. All right, so these also have uh, this new piece here, kind of where the terminal would be 
a little cover, a little terminal cover, and that's actually optional. So if you prefer just the, the more raw look of like the terminal on the end here and the connection points, and especially if you're using a, doing a dual GPU configuration like I'm doing, uh, you can actually pop this piece off and go without it. Just have that square piece that's internal right there, or you can leave it on and uh, it gives you the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti logo right there. Um, and the EK logo and you know, you, you can have that front facing on your system if you prefer. Uh, here on the bottom we can again see it's nickel uh, plated copper. This is where the water block makes contact with the GPU and then there's also uh, contact points for VRMs as well as uh, the GDDR5X memory which of which you have 11 gigs and the 1080 Ti. On the other side here we can see uh, the plexi which extends out to cover most of the card although it is clear at uh, either end so you can actually see through that to see parts of the PCB that would be under there. And then you've got a panel here that covers, I don't know what exactly that's covering, but it must be important. Uh, and then of course you can see the channels here uh, where the GPU uh, heat dissipation actually occurs. And then when this is installed, because uh, I probably am going to be using some colored fluid again, I'll most likely be using white, but still working that out. Uh, you will be able to see that a little bit as well. Uh, and I'm planning on setting up the connection points between the graphics cards to where you can see it flow in there too. And the final little extra that comes in the box is a wristband. So I can add that to my collection of wristbands. And that is pretty much going to do it for this video, you guys. I know it's just been an unboxing, but I like unboxing new fancy stuff that comes in the mail. And this box had, oh my gosh, so much exciting stuff from EK. So of course I need to get this build underway like really, really soon. But as luck would have it, and actually this happened two years ago too. Whenever I have a crazy big water cooling project like this, like lined up, it's like heat wave hits. Like right now it's been 105 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit here in Southern California all week. It, in another two, three days it's supposed to cool off a little bit, but uh, I hope it's enough that I can actually work on this in the garage because I'd rather not do the whole thing out here in the living room again. Anyway though guys, uh, I've spoken a little bit too much already for this video. Hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.